Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to actually talk about a hypothetical scenario on a hypothetical question of whether it will ever be possible for us to actually walk on the sun. It sounds crazy, right? Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, I'm not really talking about the sun as it is right now because the answer to that question will be definitely no. It's just going to burn you to crisp. But there is going to be a time in the uh, evolution of the sun when it's actually going to change quite dramatically. And so the answer in some sense is possibly yes. Now, let me actually talk a little bit more about this. So first of all, we're talking about not millions, not billions, but actually trillions of years in the future. By then, humanity might, if it's still around, if it still exists, evolve to the point where we'll not really recognize ourselves from what we are right now. By um, that period in time, sun will actually have undergone quite a dramatic change. So we're here, we can actually increase sun's age to try to demonstrate this. It's going to reach a point where it's um, a relatively large red giant when it's approximately 10 billion years old with an uh, area and volume that will probably cover most of their inner um, solar system and will definitely swallow Mercury and probably even Venus and maybe even Earth. Um, and then it's actually going to um, release this shell, creating a planetary nebula. And what's going to be left behind is going to be a... There we go. A white dwarf that in this case is known as a Sun Nova Remnant. It's going to be about 54 to maybe about 65% uh, of the mass of the current Sun. And it's actually going to become an object that's going to be in, uh, just a little bit bigger than Earth. Now, it's still going to be quite massive, and so the density here is actually very, very high, which also suggests that the surface gravity here is actually very, very high. As a matter of fact, it's approximately 32,000 times higher than the surface gravity on Earth. Uh, so, in that sense, it's actually kind of not really the place where we can easily walk on yet. But as you can see, it actually is spinning. As a matter of fact, because Sun will actually collapse, it's probably going to be spinning very, very fast um, in general. It's actually going to spin a lot faster than it spins right now. Also, with time, this white dwarf is going to start cooling down. So, at first, it's going to be really hot, but then over the period of... Okay, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Over the period of trillions of years, it's actually going to start getting darker and darker. And here we can demonstrate this by doing the following. And so, it's actually going to reach a point uh, right before becoming what's known as a black dwarf, where the temperature here is going to be very, very, very comfortable earth-like uh in this case i guess it's about 325 ish kelvin we can change it to celsius right here let's just make it let's make it about 15 or 20 degrees celsius so there's going to be a point trillions of years in the future where this object is going to be about actual normal temperature of earth and because it's actually relatively cool by now it's also going to crystallize and be become basically a very large very solid uh, crystal like object so it's not going to be uh, any kind of plasma or any other material that uh, stars are made of when they're still young now obviously it's going to be dark here so that's one problem this is going to be a dark place but if this object actually spins fast enough, in other words, if its motion is very fast, and this can kind of depend on how the sun collapses, then right here on the equator, the centrifugal forces due to rotation will actually will be pulling us to the outside of this object. And so this uh, sun remnant, this uh, sun black dwarf, is actually going to be kind of stretched. It's going to become almost like a some kind of a pancake. But walking right here on the equator is actually going to be very, very possible. And not just walking, but actually living. Now, it, it's still going to have very high gravity right here on the poles. 
But at the equator, if the future sun spins really, really fast, you can actually totally live and develop a colony. Just don't go further north and south. And because this object is going to be very similar in size to Earth, it's actually going to be very planetary-like. Now, we don't know if Earth is still going to be around, but this will provide enough heat. This will actually provide enough, some sort of an atmosphere, because usually uh, stellar remnants actually have atmosphere, although normally they're very, 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 very thin. But here, if it spins fast enough, the atmosphere will also expand. Um, and it's probably going to have quite a lot of oxygen because basically the future sun will be con um, consistent of carbon, oxygen, and a few other molecules. And since there's probably going to be also hydrogen uh, left over flying around, that oxygen is going to combine with hydrogen to create water. So for all we know, this might actually kind of look like a weird version of uh, Earth that I'm going to place right here next to... Uh, the sun remnant so it might actually possess water and possibly even the liquid water um, If there is enough materials going around so all of this is very hypothetical and actually does depend on um, How it plays out in the future of the Sun and obviously this is trillions and trillions of years ahead uh, But the biggest problem here is of course the gravity and so the gravity here will only be comfortable at the equator now, by then, obviously, human species might, if it's still around, evolve to the point where we don't even need to actually uh, have terrestrial objects and temperature of 24 or 20 degrees to survive. Um, but uh, you never know. If our bodies are still as feeble and as demanding as they are right now, maybe, just maybe, this is actually going to be the future of humanity for at least uh, a billion years. Because this situation here, this temperature... And this um, constant heat that it emanates from it right now is going to last for a few billion years. And for all we know, we might be able to actually settle on one of these black dwarfs in the future. Now, black dwarfs are still very hypothetical. They don't actually exist yet, mostly because it takes a very long time to get to this point, And the universe is actually not that um, old yet. And uh, if we ever discover a black dwarf, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to redefine science because we don't think anything actually reached Black Dwarf stage yet. We know Sirius B is very close to us and is the closest White Dwarf to us. And we have it right here somewhere. There it is. And it, it, it kind of has a slightly larger size because it has more mass and White Dwarfs usually collapse when, if they have, um, or basically they become smaller if they have larger mass. Let's place one right here just for fun. Uh, but, um, we think that our sun is going to be a little bit bigger in size. And obviously, even by the time our sun becomes a... Um, oh, wow. Okay, well, that's not what I expected. Uh, even when our sun becomes a white dwarf, it's very, very likely Sirius B is still going to be the same. So, to answer the question of whether you'll be able to walk on the sun, well, you personally, probably not. Uh, the future of humanity, if it's still around, maybe. But we're talking about very, very far future, like hypothetical future of trillions of years in the future. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully you learned something from it. And now you know a little bit more about the future of our own sun. And the fact that when it becomes a black dwarf, it's actually going to be a lot like a planet. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching and space out. And as always, bye bye.